sita wasalatu wasalamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam Praise be to the Almighty Allah Tabarak Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, the God of heaven and earth, earth and heaven the controller, the ruler, the overall, the absolute, the only one God who never lets go, he never denies, he never forsakes. He gives the very best of everything without consultation or being rewarded. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So my beloved sisters, na furai kuwaona sana. Mimi iko dada yako all the way from Uganda East Africa. Alhamdulillah. And this is my second time being in Zanzibar. Uh, I first came in 2018 and my beloved sister hosted me. I'm so privileged and so glad and so thankful to Allah that he has enabled me make it here again to specifically address my beloved sisters. For starters, my darling ones, um, I always encourage my beloved sisters to keep on that beautiful smile because whoever I'm looking at is so beautiful. And the mere fact that you are Muslimas, Muslimas, subhanAllah, that is such a precious gift from Allah Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's endeavor to keep on that beautiful smile. Did you know that smiling is sunnah? Do you know that? And the more you smile, the more nur you get on your faces. The more you smile, the more beautiful you are. You understand? The more you smile, you cut the edge. You know how much we women, we don't want to look edged, <laughs> you know? So let's keep smiling, regardless of the situations that we are going through. You have all the reasons to be smiling and be thankful to Allah Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala because he blessed you with Islam. That is just enough to say, Alhamdulillahi, Rabbil, Alamina. That is just enough because... Islam is not for everyone. Had it been for everyone, then everyone would have been a Muslim. Every woman would have been a Muslim. But the mere fact that not every woman in this world is a Muslim, and so are you, that means you are one of the blessed people, you are one of the special people, you are one of the chosen people by Allah. And so that is just a gift enough for us to be thankful to Allah regardless of what we are going through. Because we are all having challenges, we all have our hassles and hurdles, and we are all going through a lot. You understand? But, point number one, we are Muslims. We are Muslim women. Our status has been raised, subhanAllah, like no other. We are not just like any woman. That is how special we are. That is how blessed we are. You understand? So when we keep the gloomy faces, when we keep looking sad, when we keep looking problems, people are mocking us. People think we are being enslaved, they think we are being deprived of some rights, people think we are being suffocated, the mere fact that we are wearing our hijab. But let's keep smiling and showing them that we love what we are, we love who we are, we love what we are wearing, we love what our package comes with. You understand? So can I see a smile on your faces, please? It doesn't matter. Just smile because you're Muslim. Just smile because you're worshipping Allah. Just smile because Allah chose you among thousands and millions and billions of people out there. You understand? Yes. Can I see some smiles? Can I see some smiles? <laughs> okay, mashallah. That is so beautiful. I love it when people smile because look at you. Can I see some smile? My beloved sister? <laughs> okay, mashallah. That is so cute. We are all beautiful in our own ways, alhamdulillah. And so let's all keep loving our images. Let's embrace the beauty that Allah gave us, that he bestowed on us. Let's embrace our Islam as a grand gift to us. You understand, my beloved sisters? Okay, so actually, that is not our today's topic. Our today's topic is the, the power of dua. The power of dua. And before we proceed... I, my beloved camera lady, do you have a question? Okay, can you please help me out? Uh, we're going to give uh, these papers out there to you all so that if you have any question, sometimes we have those personal questions that we can't raise our hands and, you know, ask them publicly. Because, you know, as women as we are, we'll be like, hey, she also has that problem. You know, we love gossiping. However much we've been told or we've been told not to gossip. 
But as women as we are, there's that element of gossiping. So someone might ask a question, and the others will be like, eh, hey, eh, hey. so she's also been having that. You know, we are married, we have issues, we have problems, we have this and that. So that's why we give out these small papers to each individual. Please ask your, your question. You don't have to put your name, okay? But, but you can put your number just in case. Because I'm just a student of knowledge. You understand? I have my superiors. I have uh, doctors that I, 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 I consult. I have, you know, my superiors. You understand? So just in case your, your problem or your question is so complicated for me to answer, then I'll consult my superiors and then I'll get back to you. Please put your, na your number, especially the WhatsApp number, okay? Yes. My beloved camera lady, can you please split this out? So we're going to have a one lecture one hour's lecture and then another one or 30 minutes for Q&A, question and answer. Okay? Jazakallah Please give one paper to each of the sisters. And so we can, oh, thank you, mashallah. You know, this is an act of ibadah. She's also getting blessings. That's how blessing Allah is. Something small, something that you might underestimate, something you might not even consider. That's a blessing from Allah. May Allah put barak and may Allah uh, reward you, my beloved sister. The very best for dunya wal akhirah. This is my golden, uh, the golden Muslima tour. So far, this is the second region. Uh, the first tour I was in Southern Africa last year. October, November, I was in Zimbabwe, Malawi, Swaziland, and Zambia. So, so far, this is the golden Muslima tour 2024, East Africa. I'm in Zimba Z Zanzibar, Dar es Salaam, Kenya. Rwanda and Uganda. Did I tell you that I'm from Uganda? Yes, alhamdulillah. Then the next one will be West Africa. May Allah accept and take me all the way. My nickname is the Muslim of Africa because Allah has enabled me to travel to so many African countries. They host me to address sisters like you are. Okay. So Mimi Yiko Dadayako. How do Mwenyewe means what? Mwenyewe. Mwenyewe, I'm from your region. I'm from the East Africa region. You understand? Yes. So for those who would want to follow me up, look out for me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and YouTube as well. So let's proceed. The power of dua. The power of dua. Thank you so much for coming with books. I feel so sad every time I go to address people and they don't have nothing to write and any, anywhere to write but you're so good you've moved with your books may Allah enable us benefit from this Allahumma Amen so the power of dua what is dua what is dua dua this is the supplication to Allah supplication to Allah you can supplicate to Allah in your own language the language that you best understand the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us, a dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is a form of worship. Dua is a form of worship. Dua is different from the five obligatory prayers. You know we have to pray the five obligatory prayers? Those are obligatory. We are entitled to pray them without any fail. Some people take dua for granted. Some people are just like, since I pray five times a day, I don't even have to make any dua. I, first of all, after praying the five obligatory prayers, those are for your master. But then, how have you entrusted your life? We are also obliged to pray for ourselves, to supplicate for ourselves. We are also obliged to seek any form of protection. In Islam, everything has a dua. Remember, we, we are separating the dua from the five obligatory prayers. You get it? The dua, this is pray. After praying, the five obligatory prayers. After praying each prayer, you can say the dua. Say it in your language. Islam has duas for just everything. The dua for standing. The dua for, for beginning anything. The dua for wearing a new cloth. The dua for entering a market. The dua for sitting down. The dua for 
subhanallah, just everything for eating, after eating, you know? But as humans as we are, we might not be able to master each and every dua. Remember, Islam is a way of life, meaning everything that we have to do, we have to entrust our matters in Allah. Everything we have to do, entering the toilet, getting out of the toilet, entering the mosque, getting out of the mosque. Why? This is for our own benefit. If you become reluctant of the dua, you are then becoming reluctant of your own life. Someone might be like, Allah knows what I want because he's the one who created me. Yes, he does know what you want, but then he wants you to pray to him. Allah wants you to pray to him without any fail. He knows you want to get married. He knows how much you want to uh, get a car. You want to get a new dress. You want to a new house. You want to this and that. But then he wants you to cry to him. He wants you to ask him. He wants you to tear up for him. Wake up in the night. Pray to Hajjud. Cry out to Allah. Lay out everything to him. Your problems. We have so many problems as humans as we are. And never wish to be in anyone's shoes because I'm, I'm telling you, everyone has their own problems that if Allah ever exposed them, if you were ever put in anyone's shoes, you would be like, uh-uh, let them stay with their problems. Let me carry on with my own problems. Remember Allah never puts you in a situation that you can't persevere. He loves us that much. He knows how strong we are. Whatever problem that you get, trust me, you can go through it. Yes, you can persevere it, but how you handle it really matters. You understand, my dear ones? Don't just be like, oh my God, this time around I'm finished. I can't do this. Yeah, Allah, why did you? Why? SubhanAllah, we ask Allah those questions, right? We do. Sometimes when the, the problems are way so hard on us, sometimes when we, we feel like we can't carry on, yes, you can carry on. The mere fact that you are a Muslim, Allah granted us just everything in Islam. All we need is to seek for knowledge. Know what to do, how, when, where, and why to do it. Islam has provided all that for us. We see in our beautiful Quran, Al-Quran Al-Hakim, it tells us just about everything. Things are all stipulated out there. How to do what in marriages, in whatever problems that you go through. We have comforting uh, verses. Allah talking straight to us. Whichever problem that you're going through, you understand? You have your rabbi. We are not just like any other people. Some religions have interceders. People that they have to go to, tell them the problems, and they believe that person is going to, to talk to God. You understand? Islam will speak directly to Allah. Takbir. Which other gift can we be thankful of than Islam? We speak direct to Allah, there and then. Before you think of anyone else, my beloved sisters, my advice to you, if you are inflicted with any problem, if you are inflicted with anything, before you think of your husband, before you think of your mother, before you think of your best friend, call on Allah first. Okay? Let that cling into your mind. Allah comes first before anything else. If you love anything more than Allah, that is shirk. Did you know that? How much we love our husbands and our children. Allah comes first before anything else. And if you love, in your heart, if you feel like, oh, Allah is secondary, you know, of course he knows I love him. He knows that's just not enough. You get the point? Allah comes first before anything else. That means if you will ever get any problem, afflicted with any trial, this is life. We can't avoid that. Problems and trials are inevitable. We are bound to get them anytime unexpectedly. You understand? Before you know something comes up and you're just like, subhanAllah, I didn't, I didn't see this coming. You can't see it coming because you're just a human. So if anything ever inflicts you, before you think of anyone else, Allah comes first. By the way, I'm, I'm just so good at addressing the ladies. My calling is for the women, for the sisters. For the men, I don't have, I can't even speak as boldly as I'm speaking to you. Because seriously, I shy away. I don't have words for the men, sorry. You understand? All my words, whatever that is boiling in my head, is for the sisters. 
Though sometimes, of course, I address topics that, <laughs> that are so sensitive and some sisters are annoyed. But upon hearing what I say, they understand. Alhamdulillah. Just know that Allah loves you so much that he sends you, his people, to speak life into you. Sometimes we are so down and you, you really need to speak to someone so badly, but you don't have someone to speak to. Because as women as we are, from here you go tell your friend, you know what, Sister Yusura, hmm, do you think my husband came back? Oh, 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 someone will buy airtime and, hello, do you know, hmm. All along we thought that Sister Shura was okay. Her husband doesn't come back. You understand? So sometimes we, we, we are so finding it easier to keep our secrets to ourselves than trying to, to speak to someone. And yet it would have been good to have someone to talk to. But who are you going to trust with your secrets? Lately, everyone is not trustworthy. You understand? Then you die with your... Please don't die with that problem. You have the one who loves you more than anything in this world. Allah tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. From today onwards, from today onwards, my beloved sisters, just know that you are among the blessed. The mere fact that you're here today for this message, Allah loves you in a special way. Because I believe there are so many other sisters out there who heard of this, but they, they've not made it, right? But then you're here. This is your blessing from Allah. Okay, so be thankful to Allah. From today onwards, your bestest, bestest friend is Allah Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for anything that you ever get, any trial, any problem, anything abrupt, that you're so caught up in the middle of the road, that you don't know which way to take, you don't know where to go, sometimes we get that locked up in the room that there's no way out. But you have Allah Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more that you trust in him, tawakkul, speak to your rabbi. Talk to Allah and tell him, Ya Allah, I know you are the one who created me. I'm not in position to fight my own battles. You are in charge, Ya Allah. Please, even if it means cracking a wall, in, cracking a, 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 a line in a wall that I can penetrate through. That's how I usually pray to Allah. You know, when you're locked up, everything and, and the key is even thrown in the sea. You understand? Have that belief that the mere fact that you have Allah for the one you worship, the one that you serve, he can crack a line. You know cracking a line in a wall? And you can penetrate through that line. That is how glorious, that is how great Allah is. We are back to the dua. Please, before you call on anything else, I told you if you love any creature, on top of Allah, that is shirik, and it is big shirik. That means you are counting on them to finish your problems. You are counting on them to be your everything. And yet no one deserves that space in your heart apart from Allah tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, if you put Allah first in everything, you will think about Allah first in everything. For all the problems, Ya Allah, you have inflicted this on me. I believe this is good for me. Regardless, because some, most of the times we don't even see the advantage of it, especially when we get problems. Do you agree with me? When we get problems, we don't see the advantage of it. But whatever problem that inflicts a human being, there is good behind it. There is always good behind everything beyond our human understanding. Allah tells us that. So just entrust in him. You understand? So we're still back to the dua. Right after you've, give, you've been given in bad news, you, you, you knocked yourself maybe a, a, on a stone or anything, you got inflicted, something fell in your eye. Before you think of, oh my God, why did I have to pass here? They told me these birds they do this. They told me trees, uh, this and that. You know how much we start thinking of the unthinkable. You start asking, why did I have to come? Why did I have to take this route? Oh, my mother told me not to do this. Oh, why did I? We ask our question, ourselves those questions, right? Before we go into those useless whys and hows and I should have passed here, I should have sat here. Oh my God, this, that. Just know that it came from Allah. Just say, Alhamdulillah. Welcome, my beloved sister. Just say, Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Just say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah. You inflicted this on me. 
please grant me the good out of it and protect me from the bad out of it. Please pave paths for me to persevere through. Grant me strength to persevere through this trial and pave paths for me and lead me all the way throughout this. You understand? Allah is the paver of paths. Allah is the paver of paths. Before you think of uh, Aisha, before you think of Fatima, by the way, I'm good at mentioning names. It doesn't mean I really know you because no one has told me their names, right? So please don't get offended just in case I mention your name in a situation. And just like, you'll be like, oh, she came all the way from Uganda to talk about me. You heard her. As though she, I don't know anyone. You understand? But I love mentioning names so that we can relate. Oh, so she thinks I'm, I'm the one who doesn't help, eh? She, you know, please don't take it personal if I mention your name. So my beloved sisters, before you mention, before you think of Aisha, before you think of uh, Fatima, before you think of Sumaya, Trust me, these are just humans. They might even be having what you want. You might even be knowing they have it. It might even be well displayed on the table. Do you understand? And you're just like, oh, Ashura, can you please help me with a piece of paper? And I might say no. Okay, good, you know, I'll give you all the reasons not to. My, in my book, you know, if I pluck out uh, this paper, uh, it will get, you know, disorganized and everything of the sort. And you get sad. Why? Because I'm just a human. We are good at disappointing. But we are talking about Allah Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never disappoints, subhanAllah. He will always be there whenever and wherever. Anytime you call on him, it's just us that fail to supplicate to Allah. Remember we're talking at the power of dua. That is supplicating to Allah. You get the point? Please, let's stop thinking of human beings. They will disappoint us, we'll get sad, we'll feel betrayed. You understand? But Allah is the only one. Make Allah your best friend and you will live to tell a tale. You know those uh, the, the tell stories, the, the Princess Rapunzel, the Snow White stories, those ones. Have you ever read about those tales? The princess married a prince, and whatever, whatever, Snow White and Cinderella stories. Those stories happen truly when you make Allah your best friend. Those stories happen when you get closer to Allah. Do good things and pray to Allah to become his friend. Who doesn't want to be Allah's friend? Aren't you looking forward to that? And how do we... It seems you people don't want to be me. I want to be Allah's friend, Sister Yusra. You don't want to be Allah's friend? Who doesn't want to be Allah's friend? We all want to be Allah's friends, right? So please, let's keep doing good. Just put yourself in shoes that you are a mother and have children at home. But there's that one specific child who looks out for you. Mama, this. You remove your shoes and the kid is, is cleaning your shoes. Mama, the shoes are here. You know, before you mention her name, calling out for the children, she's there in front of you. Mom, are you calling me? You love all your kids, but trust me, your heart will fall so much for this child. Who's looking out for you? Am I right? There's that sibling of yours, a sister. She's always there. She looks out for you. Before you know, I, I ironed your cloth. She might be your little sister. Trust me, you will love all your siblings, but you'll have a special heart for that sibling. You'll be out there and you'll, you'll think of buying them something to make them happy, to do this and that. That is how Allah is. He loves us all. But trust me, there are people that are friends with Allah. That are way closer to Allah than everyone else. And we would all want that position. So let's strain for it. It doesn't come on a silver plate. It doesn't come from a mere say. Say it with actions. Because someone will be like, oh, we love Allah. We love Allah. But are you really, really in love Loving Allah is, is just not enough. But are you in love with Allah? You understand? So when you are in love with Allah, you're going to entrust him. You're going to let him, you're going to trust him with your life. You're going to let him be your driver. You're going to supplicate to him just about everything. Allah paves paths where there aren't any paths. That's when I told you that you can penetrate through a line, a crack in a wall. 
when you believe that Allah has the ability to do just everything. So from today onwards, please, let's train ourselves. Before we think of anything else, before we think of anyone else, trust me, you are not in position to fight your own battles. I'm going to, to, <laughs> to find people who are dozing. You know, finding. Yeah, and, and uh, find your fine. Am I speaking the right one? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'll find you fine, and I'm seeing them. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot to come with sweets. <laughs> Subhanallah. I'm good at, after the lecture, I ask questions and give out sweets. To see the attentive people. You know, if you miss out a thing, because it's just an hour. You get the point? But this hour might be the turning point of your life. Subhanallah. So don't let Shatwin make you doze and make you miss anything. Because that thing that you might miss with dozing might be the turning point of your life. Who knows? Allah knows best, Ya Rabbi. So please try to keep attentive when it comes. We know that do to protect ourselves from shatwin. How do we na shaitan? Rajim. So that is Islam. That is a dua. Just about everything. Subhanallah. And when you write whatever you write, please go and teach it out to others. That is Islam. When you get knowledge, I don't teach a lot of things because I don't believe in all spending the maybe all many how many hours teaching and talking about this and that but let's get quality. It can be something small but so effective. Note it down. Where are you writing my camera lady? <laughs> Trust me with this busy uh, schedule the life that we are living in so destructive we have thinking about someone might be here physically but they already their minds are home i didn't prepare for them lunch i have to rush here my co-wife did this she sent me that message I, from here i have to go to her she will explain you understand <laughs> what is she going to explain you guys are just going to fight i'm just giving an example okay but that is the reality of human beings. That's how we are. So normalize and train yourselves wherever you are, wherever you go for any knowledge, please note it down. The ink never fades. You'll always refer to it and then teach it to others. That is equally Sadaqatul Jariya. When you teach it out, someone else will practice it. Oh, Ashura, Ashura from Uganda said, please don't call me Ustada, don't call me Shekat. You understand? Just call me Ukhti. At least oh, Ashura. Even Ashura is okay. Because I told you, a shekat has to be acquired. I'm still a student of knowledge. Don't call me Hajat because I've not yet gone for the Mecca. That is also another privilege that people acquire. People strain for that. You understand? Please don't call me Ustada. I'm not yet there. Just call me Ashura Mutale or Ukhti, Sister Ashura. Okay? Alhamdulillah. So someone will be like, Ashura came from Uganda and she taught about supplicating to Allah. The power of dua. The beauty of dua. That before we think about anything else, before we think about anyone else, to retrieve us from the situations that we are in, to retrieve us from this deepest well, we should think about Allah. Because he promised us that he'll always be that unbreakable rope to retrieve us from the deepest well. So all we need is to trust him. All we need is to pray to him. All we need is to cry to Allah. Ask for his mercy, for his protection, for his love. Ask Allah, ya Allah, I want to be your friend. Please show me the way because there are ways of things that we have to do. It doesn't come on a silver plate. We have to strain for that. You understand? We have to work for it. Do things that impress Allah. Pray to him directly. Ya Allah, I want to be your friend. Please use me in different ways. I want to serve you. And Allah will facilitate you. You don't have to, have to be having much. All it needs is the facilitation of Allah. And trust me, when it gets to this to us, some people think like, oh, I think she has money. I think she has sponsors. Well, I don't have sponsors. Some people are like, oh, how much do they pay you? Oh, she must be paid. Yes, I'm paid. Alhamdulillah. And I am highly paid, subhanAllah. And my payment, my wage is incomparable. And who knows how I'm paid? That's how I missed out my sweets. How am I paid? 
for these two hours I, I travel this there I have to go to Mombasa Nairobi Nakuru wherever wherever Rwanda Dar es Salaam I'm paid Alhamdulillah who might have an idea of who am I working for who is paying me Allah Allah Akbar Takbir so when someone asks me oh how much are you paid I just look at you and I'm just like subhanallah how can someone ask such a question oh no way she, might, she can't be traveling just for no nothing wallahi I'm being paid and my wage and my payment my salary is incomparable to any salaries in this dunya and who is my master who is my employer Allah tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala and who is bigger than that you understand it doesn't require money I repeat it doesn't require money just pray to Allah and leave it to him he will do his facilitation he will make connections with the right people most of the times when I'm traveling my flyers are out you understand the flyers I'm all over social media before you know someone contacts oh my the car is here I'm going to drive you people from wherever I'm being picked from wherever maybe the airport by a special car you see how all are facilitates someone will connect the other one will connect before you know there's so many avenues being paved subhanallah someone just wants to help you know I'm also doing this feasibility I'm also you understand when you want to work for Allah don't look at the world just know ya Allah because we're just passengers here anytime soon we are leaving this world anytime soon in a blink of an eye before you know death comes unannounced it never warns us you get the point so let's keep praying to Allah we are back to the dua when you feel you want to be close to Allah you want to be friends with Allah pray to him directly just be like yeah Allah I really want to serve you I really want to be your friend I really want to be close to you please show me the way show me how to he will facilitate you he'll simplify everything for you he will grant you the energy the zeal when it comes that oh subhanallah my 2000 my 2023 tour was in december and oh no october and december yeah allah the year is is getting in the middle of the road please pave me another tour trust me it doesn't even take a month don't just connect blah 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 sisters yusra where are you are you there? oh sister shura you're so blah 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 oh come you're welcome you understand that's how allah does his things then before you know Tanzania, blah 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 everything is just well sought bismillah poo. you get moving okay so let's just have it in our minds that allah comes first before anything else and we have to pray to allah pray to allah even the silliest thing sometimes you're just like hey, how can i tell allah that i want to be uh, more than my co-wife you know i'm in a polygamous marriage and i advocate for polygamy how many of you how many of us <laughs> yeah, before i know you're going to ask me which number you know i'm not answering that <laughs> you know women when i talk about polygamy women are like oh which number are you <laughs> that doesn't matter okay. jealousness is jealousness whatever number you are i'm telling you it will hit in whether you're number one the first lady i call the number one the first ladies whether you're number two whether you're number three or number four jealousness eh knows no human Jealousness knows no motivational speakers and inspirational speakers like me because I'm a motivational and inspirational speaker. It will hit in before you know, hey, she every day she has been teaching us about polygamy. Kumba, even how she can become jealous. Yes, <laughs> I'll become jealousy, you know? <laughs> you understand? How many of us are in polygamous marriages? Alhamdulillah, I'm so proud of you. I'm not saying I'm not proud of others that are not, <laughs> but. Subhanallah, anyway, that's another story. I don't want to get into that. But you should also be prepared for it. Okay? <laughs> Those are some of the topics that women, sisters don't want to hear. But whether we like it or not, they'll marry anyway. They will marry. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do? You understand? 
When you have Allah for the one that you worship, for the one that you entrust in, for the one that you cling on to in every way, at the news of, you know, Habibi, he will tell you. He will. You know, Habibi, I married another wife. Oh, my son. Even some people's hearts have... You know, <laughs> that is coming from me, but some people's hearts have been... Wallahi, before you think of, oh, my, you know, subhanAllah, we think of the impossibilities. Putting off the hijab, maybe this is not enough. Maybe your prayers stay. You will tell the men that I'm not going to pray your prayers as though they are his prayers. That is how wild we get. You understand? That is how disconnected we get. Subhanallah. Over a human being and over verses that was well stipulated in the Quran by Allah, the perfect. He never makes mistakes. So when you, be, you, when you come closer to Allah, when you become Allah's friends, some things are going to be lighter. And people will say, if yeah, she doesn't have a heart, yes, we have hearts. My beloved sister, we came in the car, she said, she's telling, she's simply speaking about her other co-wife sister. And I'm just like, mashallah, I didn't even know she had a co-wife sister. <laughs> so when she mentioned this, I said, ah, mash, and she's speaking it with ease. You understand? That is what they say, praying to Allah. That is what it means, and trusting in Allah, and praying to him just about everything. Upon hearing such news, because such news usually gets us disorganized, disconnected. We feel like the whole world has crumbled onto us. We feel like they've married a lion and bringing it in our houses to destroy us. Upon hearing that news, you have to keep calm. And who are you calling on first before thinking of anything else? Before crying to your mother, mama, uyo, baba, uyo, anawawa? Who are we going to call on first? Allah tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Because this is big. Eh? Please grant me the strength to persevere through. If she is a good woman, let her stay. If she is a bad one, that she has come to disorganize us. I think this is where everyone now wants to master this dua. <laughs> Getting if she's a bad one, let her go. You understand? But start with if she's a good one. Because some people, Jamani, they have no problem. Is Jamani right? Mm -hmm. Yes. They have no problem. I might use a wrong word somewhere. <laughs> so some people have no problem. Some sisters are just wanting to get married to fulfill the 50 percentage of their ibadat. I mean, they come in peace. But because we are irritated, we get so scared, and then we do the unthinkable. You understand? We're not going into the topic of polygamy, but I'm just giving you an example of where some things hit us unaware. Some things just are, you know, sound so complicated, so impossible, and yet they're real. They're happening in our lives. And they will happen someday, inshallah. So please be prepared. Okay? But at least when it happens to you, that your husband comes, you know, he might buy you a chocolate, he might take you to a special place, take you for dinner. You're there smiling and enjoying your tea, your coffee, baba this, baba that, with all your makeup. You know, mama so-and-so. Mama Hamza, I, I brought you here on a special occasion. I would want to let you know that. Then when you see his face is no longer smiling and serious, that's when your, your heart starts to poo, poo. That's when your smile fades. I married. Some people might throw the cups away. That's how crazy we get when our men marry. So you brought me on in, in, in this mess to tell me all this whatever you understand just close your eyes take a deep breath because you 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 have to you get the point remember allah wallahi delight allah i swear to you i what my god please try this try this you're going to take my numbers okay just in case of anything Please feel free, I'm your sister. Please feel free to contact me for any consultation. Okay? I'm your sister. Just in case you need someone to talk to. 
we will talk and you'll be like ashura you taught us that allah will and burden you with that biggest log on your back on your heart and it will seem so simple so light it will feel like absolutely nothing and people will say oh her man married but she's stupid she's not doing anything look at her she's still happy what does that for you allah, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahi if you entrust allah with your matters in everything and speak to him ya allah i'm just your servant you didn't create me to fight any battles ya allah my purpose of being created on this world in this dunya is to worship you nothing else you have haters as humans as we are someone will even hate you over nothing supplicate to allah in islam we have do us for everything talk to allah speak to him ya allah such and such a person or people hate me over nothing maybe i did something to them that i might not know because as humans as we are we fault and we don't even know i might say something thinking i'm i'm, I'm making you laugh yet it's the opposite we are different we perceive things differently you understand what might be fun to me or a joke for me might be something so sensitive to someone else so you might have offended someone unknowingly pray to allah yeah allah please calm them down ease them down then for those haters that hate you over nothing yeah allah divert their minds supplicate to allah just about everything another secret supplicate to allah to to make you hmm. i'm gonna say this <laughs> it's about polygamy i mean how do we survive in this polygamous family you might you know you understand sometimes you won't know what your other co-wife does people are good at going into shirik are you going to, into shirik because of that are you going to let go of your rabbi because a creature a creature is your husband married on top of you no islam has taught us just about everything we have all those do us pray to allah even the silliest thing that's what i usually tell the people you understand me i pray to allah to make me the favoritist over my co-wives you understand that's not haram like you said aisha yes please spice me up with all the ingredients like a thousand pray to allah just about everything you understand because you don't know what your other wife co-wife does she might if if she's a good person she might be also supplicating allah to for whatever things that you're not even hearing so also pray to allah for just everything we want to be the favorites we want to be the you know everything first and all that you're not going to sit back and say oh okay he married he does no longer love me so what what else do i have to do before you know whispers of shatwin through the genes and the human beings oh you're there sister yusura you think you're going to maintain that marriage without doing hey you'll be there hey they are going to come you understand but you don't have to do that we have it all in islam we have the doers so my beloved ones someone is going to say can i pray to allah so that my husband doesn't marry you know we have to supplicate to allah just about everything right yes. to pray to allah for their husband not to marry is it a good prayer is it a right prayer or not Oh, so, so some other people there it is right because they don't want no one wants want polygamy no. most of the 98 percent of the women it's only two percent and when you say you're you're into polygamy people will be like Shh. i'm not you come jenga you come jenga how can she say that she, she she's okay with polygamy you know <laughs> you understand but you know there are people like me even people like like sister yusra having all this responsibility you know having the man alone is i don't know how you people handle it but subhanallah it's hectic that's a fact i know deep down you don't want to accept but when you sit alone just like ah nachoka nachoka sana you baba is coming oh don't we sometimes do that because you want your you time the me time you want sometimes you want to spend the time you know undisturbed yeah. and with the schedules 
the way she's, uh, you know, handling all this responsibility, having the man alone, you're going to tear yourself down. I wouldn't be here if I was in monogamous marriage. Because who am I leaving him for? I travel for a month. You understand? And he's okay with it. He saw the gift in me and he's okay for me to serve the Ummah. That's also a blessing from Allah because not so many can do that. You understand? So that is a way. When you pray to Allah, Allah, I want to serve you. He facilitates you. Even the husband he will give you will, be in, will fall in that category. Because the man will see you can do something. You can make a change. You can address the sisters. Because there are topics that are best understood when addressed by a sister to a sister. No matter how many sheikhs can talk about polygamy and bring all the evidence from the Quran and all that, trust me, women will be like, hmm, let him speak. Men will be like, hmm, kwanini anaongea. Let him speak. We won't understand. You get the point? Unless that it comes from a sister who is in polygamy to stand firmly with authority to address polygamy. I know all the challenges it comes with. I know where, where jealousness hits in. I know what, when, where, and how. You get the point? Unlike the, 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 the men. To us, we feel like they are, they, are, they are benefiting. What is even telling us? Now when we talk about the marriage and the challenges we are going through lately, why our marriages are falling apart? Can a man really come and speak about marriage on the, on the side of women? Do they even know how we are suffering and how much we are this and that and how much we are hustling and trying to impress them? You understand? These are topics that can be best dressed by a sister to a sister and can be best understood. When you hear it from your fellow sister, you can say, oh, you can relate and say, oh, so this is this and this is how we have to do it. Jealousness comes in here. And this is how to handle it. You understand? I want to tackle so much about polygamy because you all look like youngsters and <laughs> you're not yet there. Maybe next time when I'll come back, be even Rahman. <laughs> Who knows? But it's not a crime for your man to marry. So don't be like, oh, now she's praying for us that next time she comes, we shall be in polygamy. Ah, I'm not praying for anyone. But be prepared. Okay? You're going to take my numbers. I know some of you will, will text me. Sister Shura crying, please, you don't, there's no time for crying. This life is too short. We have a lot to do than think of our co-wives. You understand? So my beloved sisters, let us keep with us, putting Allah first before anything else. Loving Allah on top of everyone else. No one deserves the first place of love in your heart than Allah. And when you do so, that is shirk. I told you we have all sorts of do-us for just everything. For just everything. Before you open your book, before you begin writing, after writing, after eating, before you, be, you sit, after standing, entering the school, entering the market, entering the car, subhanAllah. That is Islam. Islam is life. So let's go ahead and see the etiquettes of do-a. The etiquettes of do uh, that is the manner some people are just like you know what i pray but my prayers are not being answered how am i supposed to pray how do i have to pray yes we can refer to a verse from surat gafir this is the 40th chapter verse 60 and allah tells us call upon me and i will respond to you verily those who disdain my worship will enter hell in humiliation. Meaning if we fail to call on to Allah, supplicating to Allah, we are bound to go into hell. You understand? That's a verse that comes from Surah Gafir. That's the 40th chapter, verse 60. Allah tells us to call on to him that he will respond to us. Just like I told you that, Adu'a hu al ibada. Dua is a form of worship. So failure to do it, I mean, who else are you going to pray to? Who are you consulting for your problems? Who are you consulting to solve your problems, for your needs? Who are you asking for help in any ways, apart from Allah? 
Meaning if you have anyone else that you think of, you are bound to go to hell. That is shirik. Yeah. So let's go and see the etiquettes of dua. The mannerism of dua. How should we pray to Allah? Okay? How should we pray to Allah? You're not writing. <laughs> Maybe you know everything. I wish I came with sweets so I can ask you guys questions. Because I usually do that. Please remind me for other events so we can buy some sweets. Inshallah. So first and foremost, we have to be in our state of wudu. Though, though, someone might ask like, oh, so should I have to be getting wudu every time I have to, to pray to Allah? Because if that was, it's, it's, it's recommendable to have wudu, you understand? Though, sometimes we don't have wudu. Does that mean we can't pray to Allah? Yes, we can pray to Allah. If it were obliged, if it were a must, it were, if it were a farad that we have to be wudu, then it would have been so difficult. People would have become reluctant. You understand? But it's recommendable. If you can, please get wudu. Humble yourself. We are even recommended to pray maybe two rakats to start off. But that doesn't mean you can't say dua to Allah just wherever and whenever. You understand? Because someone will be like, oh my God, I wanted to pray to Allah, but again, I don't have wudu. Oh, let me postpone till I'll get wudu. Mm -mm. Talk to Allah, speak to Allah, wherever and whenever. But there are those specific needs, things like, yeah, Allah, I want to get married. You know, those points, I'm married for years and I don't have a kid. You understand? Those Make sure big things that we need in our lives. Get wudu. You understand? Get yourself so worn, adorned in your beautiful clothes. You know how much we have those prayer clothes that are, are, are usually hanged on those nails and we take like months without washing them. When last did you wash that prayer, that prayer cloth? Sorry. Even the prayer mats themselves. Subhanallah. We take months, the prayer mat changes the color. That's when you just, oh my God, I have to wash this. When last did you wash your prayer mat? Let's normalize washing these prayer mats. May Allah grant that to us, subhanAllah. That is a laziness that is in, in so many human beings. You understand? When I say human beings, I also include myself. Okay? Then we just hang the prayer mat, uh, sorry, the prayer cloth. Ta! And guess what? The shabbiest cloth is what we choose for the prayer mat. If they ever told you to dress up in that prayer mat to go to a meeting, you'd be like, ah, how? Why? Why aren't you dressing up to go to a meeting? Huh? Remember the meeting you are in your prayer. You're meeting with the Most High, Al Aliyu. You're meeting with the Almighty Allah, Tabarak Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The king of all kings al Malikul Mulk. And then we have the shabbiest. The shabbiest. Sometimes it even has holes. That means we are taking prayer for granted. We are taking prayer for. Remember prayer is the meeting with Allah. That is your meeting with your Rabbi. Your master. The most glorious. You understand? You are meeting with the master of masters, the Lord of all laws, the God of all gods. Then how dare you wear the shabbiest cloth? How dare you wear the... Subhanallah, it's, it's, we don't even iron them. After washing, you just throw it there. Before you know it has holes. Yeah? I dare you. You cannot wear that to prayer to, to a market. And if you are among the blessed people that you take good care of your your prayer cloth you are indeed one of the blessed people but you can't even wear that prayer dress to go to that am i right we all know our status right now i'm speaking about the prayer cloth everyone is picturing their prayer cloth and where it's hung and how much people have to look for them wherever and maybe the corners and sometimes we get them from the dirty clothes and then we Whilst going out, we come out so clean and oh, mashallah. Ma 
Then getting back, putting this off and where is this thing? We even call it this thing. You're going to a meeting with your rabbi, the one who created you. You understand, my dear ones? So that is also an etiquette for dua. We are looking at that special, those special duas I told you. Duas that we can't just say, oh Allah, oh give me a child. Just, yeah? This is something so serious. Huh? You've been married for years. And before you know the youngsters that are getting married, or people just newly married, are getting kids. And you keep counting, oh yeah Allah, had I gotten my child in my first year, that my child would be bigger than them. Before you know the kids are, are jumping, they are going to school, that sadness of wanting a child. Meaning this is serious. You understand? We begin with the clothes. And as I'm talking with the clothes, someone will be like, oh, Ashura said with the clothes, I think this one should only be for the special dua, this cloth after you take it back. Please keep that cloth for all the prayers, for all the obligatory prayers, because we are entitled to wear clean. Allah loves cleanliness. You understand? Allah loves us when we are clean. You can even perfume yourself inside the house. You're going to meet the, the, the most high. You should be excited, you know? Prepare yourself. You understand, my dear ones? The clean clothes come first. Of course, clean clothes go hand in hand with the clean prayer mat. Let's normalize at least washing our prayer mats every month. Okay? Don't wait for it to turn into brown and all that before you know it's even, hey, unrecognizable. So, clean clothes. Get wudu. That is for those special. I mentioned them. We have so many problems. I might be having a few. Who else can add on that? Marriage, children. Which other big problems that we have? We might be disturbed in, in, in we might be still in rentals, renting, and we want our own ha house. You understand? Another one. Huh? Huh? Yeah, a disease. A disease. Another one. It's poverty. Poverty wants to be in poverty. Eh? SubhanAllah. We don't have to pray for too much that will become a temptation to us. You know, some people are just like, those Muslims are very stupid. Because, you know, Islam teaches us not to be hungry for this world. When you get a vitis, you're praying for a hammer. You're praying for a, for a limousine. For a limousine. You're praying for, you understand? Pray for what you need. Allah will indeed provide you with everything that you need and not all that you want. And when you pray to Allah to alleviate poverty from you, it doesn't mean that you're going to get a, 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 a big mansion. You're going to get, you understand? Oh, I need a car. I want to cruise in those Pajelos and Range Rovers. Uh -uh. He will give you what you need to sustain you. You understand? Let's pray to Allah to provide us and not to lack. To become givers, to put us in position to give and not to rather beg. You understand? Even the peace of the mind that is wealth. You know that the people that we look up to, oh, they're coming in big cars. Some of them don't even sleep at night. Some of them are, were forbidden to eat some meals. You know that? Meanwhile, you can sit at home and enjoy your chicken and your fish in whichever way you want, in whichever position. Some people can't eat the chicken and they have all the money. So where is the happiness? Who enjoys this life most? You understand? So let's not look at the huge and whatever lavish life there can be in this dunya. But rather pray to Allah to provide us with our necessities. The peace, the inner peace, the contentment of the heart. You understand? Yes, my beloved ones. So we are looking at the etiquettes of dua. Clean clothes. Then the dua. She talked of a poverty, disease, a child, marriage. Okay, my dear ones. So then let's get to praising Allah. Praise Allah. Call on his names. He loves it when we pray to him by praising him with his beautiful attributes. Asma wa sifa. We know those names, the beautiful names and attributes. 
start calling him on with those beautiful names. Because every name has an attribute. Every name is attributed to something so beautiful that no human can ever attain. So we talked of getting wudu and the prayer mat, clean clothes, you understand? Facing the Qibla. Does that mean if I'm not, I don't know the Qibla, I won't pray to Allah. I told you, we can supplicate to Allah wherever and whenever. You understand? Just anywhere. Just about anything. But there are those huge problems that you need a one-on-one -on -one to feel, Ya Allah, I am here. I've come to talk to Ya Allah. I know, especially in Tahajjud. That is the first not missing out spear. This spear doesn't miss out, and it's the fastest. Tahajjud. Please cling on to it. No more lies. Make it your daily prayer. Okay? That's the first never missing out spear. There you are. Allah is on. Allah is on the first heavens. In the third quarter of the night, asking which one of my servants is in need I'm here to grant you your prayer I'm here to give you whatever you need and before you know some people are busy sleeping then you wake up with that intention I have a meeting with Allah it's just not a matter of, of making the alarm because how many times have we said the alarms and they, they, uh, they, they, they ring and we never wake up many times so even going or, or preparing yourself for tahajjud, pray to Allah. Ya Allah, tonight I want to speak with you. Tonight I need a meeting with you. You don't even to set the alarm. Then you'll see how great Allah is. I swear to you, 3 a.m., 3.30, 4, 4.30, at least 5, you will just wake up. Takbir. Allah. Indeed, Allah is the greatest. Just talk, before you sleep here, Allah, tonight, I really need a meeting with you, Allah. I want to speak to you about something. Is it your co-wife? Is it your husband? Is it your... Because we are forgetting all those things. We are talking of poverty. We are talking of disease. The husband themselves. He becomes a problem. This man, Kwanini, he doesn't come back. Harodi. Kwanini, Aneda Wapi. You understand? Women, we have so many problems. And I swear, if we don't get clinged on to Allah, we are going to drain. And that's how people end up in shirk. Because this world is so trying, it's so full of challenges, trials. And sometimes I wonder how non-Muslims survive, subhanAllah. You know, Islam teaches us just about everything. How to do what, when, why, how, and where. But then the man Muslims, how do they, by the way, I'm a Muslim revert. I, I, I didn't mention that. I just referred it to Islam, alhamdulillah. And I take the most precious gift that I can ever encounter on. Because sometimes I'm just like, yeah, Allah, had you kept me in Christianity, how would life be like right now? How would I even survive? We have a gift that we, we don't know. We have a gift of Islam that we are taking for granted, subhanAllah. You understand? So, don't, don't strain yourself with that man, with that husband of yours. You have the one who created him, Allah. He knows his moves. Even as you're crying right now on that pillow, waiting for him to come, sometimes he might not even come back. And he doesn't want to be questioned, where were you? Because that, you might end up with a slap. Am I right? This is what is happening. Who are you to question me? These men feel they have that ego. You know, you don't have to, to question him. You don't have to, to, to argue with him. You have the one who created him, Allah. Handle that man to Allah. Yeah, Allah, you're the one who cry those tears that you're crying on that pillow, on the prayer mat. He is capable of changing him, grounding him onto you. Because he has the switches to control him. You understand? We don't have to strain. Things have been made easy for us. That is if we entrust in, if we entrust in Allah. 
if we handle our matters to Allah, things will be easier. Things will be, subhanAllah, everything will be solved in the easiest manner that we can never think of. You understand? So my dear ones, we still are looking at the mannerism of supplication. After praising Allah with all those beautiful names, Ya Allah, you're the most high, the most gracious, the most uh, powerful, God of all gods, King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. Ya Allah, you are the only one who never disappoints, the never, only one who never lets go. You give the very best of everything without consultation or being rewarded. There are so many. Look out for those attributes that are not affiliated with human beings. I repeat, there are things that people attribute to Allah that, oh Allah, you, you don't eat mandazi. Someone was attributing to Allah with that, you know, attribute. You know? Oh Allah, you don't eat mandazi. Of course Allah, we, we do, we, who even knows whether Allah eats or not? So how in your head can you start thinking, oh Allah, you don't eat mandazi. Me, my Allah doesn't eat mandazi. Hey, and someone is probably saying, out that, saying that out loud. You understand? So those attributes are there. Please seek for knowledge. I'm seeing we all have smartphones. Please make use of your smartphones for the beneficial knowledge. Go and look for the net nine names of Allah and his beautiful attributes. They are there. Match to them. Know what the names mean. There are so many you might not be able to, you know. But look out for what you are praying for. And look out for the name that affiliates with it. And then read it as many times as you can. Huh? Have you heard? Have we understood that? Yes, yes please. Look out for a name like um, Yagafar. You want to be forgiven in any ways. Okay? Read it as many as Tagafirullah. Astagfirullah. Let's, let's repeat that. You know? Ya Gafar, Ya Gafar. Let's repeat that. You understand? So, my dear ones, yes, that's the way. Then, another one, thank Allah. We are looking at the procedure of our prayers being answered. Thanking Allah. Pray for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Praise Allah. Call on him by his beautiful names and attributes. Then thank him. Thanking Allah is also another big topic. Independent on its own. We are taking thanking Allah for granted. Subhanallah. Thanking Allah is a must. When you thank Allah, he'll give you more. He tells us, thank me and I will increase you. In one of his surahs, he mentions that in, in one of the chapters in Quran, Al Quran Al Hakim, Allah tells us to thank Him that He will increase us. Let's be more thankful to Allah. So when you get on that prayer mat, thank Allah. Yeah, Allah, thank you. Before you complain about, oh, my marriage, yeah, Allah is falling out, my marriage, this, at least there are some good things in that marriage. There are some things that are hidden in that marriage that you, you're not even thinking of. The mere fact that he's providing for you. There's so many sisters out there that are straining on their own. They even have to buy everything for, the, for themselves. You understand? So please don't take anything for granted. Before you pour it all out, oh yeah, Allah, I have a meeting with you, then pull, pull, get on the prayer mat after the two rakats, or three. You know, it's, it's tahajud and then witr. So you can either pray two and then wait to one or you can go up to 11. We know that, right? Then before anything else, Allah already knows even what you're going to pray to him. Subhanallah. Takbir. He knows everything, but he wants you to pray to him because you are entitled to pray to him. So before you, oh Allah, this husband, yeah Allah, you see he's not coming back these days. I think he married. First thank Allah for that marriage. Ya Allah, thank you for granting me a husband. I am someone's wife. As much as you feel so suffocated and so deprived of whatever that you want to complain to Allah about, yes, you have your right. But then thank Allah for that marriage. Thank Allah for that man. Thank Allah that someone refers to you as so-and-so's wife. There's so many, trust me, sisters, there's so many sisters out there who have prayed for that for years. And Allah has not yet granted them. A husband so after that thank Allah that he has enabled you wake up 
Because there are so many people who even set the alarms and they don't even wake up. But you're in position to, to Allah put you among his servants that have woke up this night to have a meeting with him. You understand? So thank Allah for that. Thank Allah for your life, your general life. Your children, your people. I mean, thank Allah generally in just everything. Okay? Of course, facing the Kibra this time around, we are praying to Hajjid, we know where the Kibra is. After thanking Allah, we are going to supplicate for the Prophet, praying for him. Do we know how to supplicate for him? To pray for the Prophet? Yes. Mm -hmm. After praying for the Nabi, you, we have to repent. After doing that, then raise your hands and pour it all out to Allah. Or go in the sujood. We are being told the best dua, the best way of talking to Allah is the sujood. But there are some people who can't sustain being so long in the sujood. Okay? Please raise your hands. But try your level best as much as you can to keep in the sujood. Cry it all out. You're crying to the master. You're crying to the answer of prayers, Al-Mujib. You're crying to the almighty Allah, Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who loves you like no other. The one who cares for you more than your mother. The one who can never disappoint you. Who never let you down. Who never give up on you. He'll always be there for you regardless. He promised that he'll always be that unbreakable rope to always retrieve us from the deepest wells that's the allah that i'm talking about you understand pour it all out pray to him even the silliest thing i told you for those who have co-wives you are you have the right to pray to allah to make you the favorite test you know there's no crime in that because meanwhile as you're lousing about and you know relaxing and oh i'm young she's She's old. You know, sometimes we take those things for granted. You might be young, but subhanAllah, she might be irreplaceable. And you might be, do, you might be thinking of doing anything stupid, thinking he can't let you go. You understand? And while lie within a blink of an eye, he's willing to let you go and stay with the one that you thought was old. You get the point? Yes. So my dear ones, meanwhile as we might get relaxed and think of this and that and thinking, oh, this marriage is in the favor of me because of whatever reasons that you might be having, trust me, it all goes hand in hand with prayer. And praying to none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless that you have something that you are clinging on to apart from Allah. And if you ever have anything aside Allah, that is shirk. That is? And shirk is? Huh? Yeah. Associating anything on top of Allah, that is shirk akbar. That is a sin that with no doubt, if you don't repent, will lead you to hell. Jahannam. Okay, my dear ones. So... We are almost there, alhamdulillah. We are done with that. Hope you've listed all oh, that down. Okay, thank you so much. I'm added 15 more minutes. You know what? I love it when I'm, when I'm being warned because I can speak and even forget <laughs> that I'm speaking. I can speak for hours. You understand? But I usually want to address one hour. So I'm so glad I've been given 15 more minutes. You understand? Meaning my time was 1 and 15 minutes. And then we'll go in questions. Inshallah, may Allah accept. Thank you so much. So, yes, we are winding this up. After, yes, pouring it all out. Have faith that your dua will be accepted. That is also part of the etiquette of dua. Are you hearing me, my beloved sisters? Before you start off your dua, just know that you're praying to the Most High. You're praying to the Almighty Allah Tabarak subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Aziz. That you are praying to the answer of prayers, Al-Mujib. That you are entrusting your matters and your issues in the only one God who will never give up on you, who will never disappoint you, who will never betray you, who will never gossip. You understand? That you are entrusting your matters in the overall. 
Okay? Have faith that your prayer is going to be answered. Don't be like, oh, Ashura said, let's pray to Allah. Okay, let me just try and see. Mm -hmm. So you pray to Allah with all the doubts and all that. Your prayer will be not answered. But just have faith there, Allah. Please answer. Even ask him, please answer my prayer. You see how badly I'm in need of this? You see how badly I'm suffocating? You see how badly I'm suffering? Please answer my prayers and leave the rest to him. Now the question is, Sister Ashura, I've prayed for over years. Uh-uh. Jamani, Nachoka. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Ah, me Allah does not hear my prayers. I don't know why. You know, we have those complaints. Me Allah doesn't hear my prayers. Maybe Allah this, maybe Allah that. Why doesn't he hear my prayers? Allah does hear your prayers, but Allah answers us in different ways, in three different ways. Sometimes Allah gives us what we pray for. That is, if there is any good in it. You know how much we pray for just everything? We pray for things that are not even good for us, but because we are just humans, we can't tell whether they are good or bad. But Allah is the all-knowing Al-Alim. He knows what's good for us and what's not. The mere fact that you've entrusted your issues to him, your matters to him, he is going to give you the very best. So if the prayer you're praying for, for example, you're praying for a man, you have that one Hamza, you have that one Yusuf, you have that one um, Abdullah, huh? mention those names, mention those names, you know them. You're just like, yeah, Allah, please, you see my heart is fallen for Hamza. I'm so in love with this man, yeah, Allah. You see, I can't breathe. You know, Allah sees us and how much we can't breathe and how much we are craving and urging and wanting them so badly, wanting them to marry us, you know? But Allah knows who they are and that they might not be good for us. You understand? So, as we are praying, let's always leave that, yeah, Allah, if there is anything good, in this for me, please grant it to me. If there is no good in it, please replace it. You understand? Let's not pray in a one-sided way. Let's leave that two-way sides. Of if there is anything good granted to me, if there is no good, replace it with the best for me. You get the point, my dear ones? So, let's endeavor to, to entrust in Allah. And... Three ways of Allah answering our prayers. One, yes, he grants it to us the very way that we prayed for him. Do you understand? But sometimes he won't give it to us. Some prayers you're praying for this and you'll never get it. Why? Because there's no good in it for you. Allah loves us so much and he wants good for us. Just by mere praying to Allah. That is entrusting your matters in Allah. And so Allah plays his role. And trust in him to be your driver. Trust in his process. You get the point? So if you pray for Abdullah and Allah brings Ibrahim and Allah brings uh, uh, Bilal or Allah brings uh, Hussein, just say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamina. This must be the best for me. You understand? Because had Allah showed you the other flip side of whoever you've been praying for. We'll be like, inna lillahi wa inna lillahi raj ona. So, we get what we want. That is when Allah gives it to us. But sometimes he replaces it. He won't give us that very thing that we pray for. But he replaces it with something better. Most of the times we might not see that. Oh Allah removes anything that would have inflicted us. Just know that whichever prayer that we pray is being answered. Every prayer is being answered but differently. Sometimes Allah will give us what we pray for, for here in the life hereafter. That is the third way of Allah answering our prayers. The first one, he gives us what we pray for. That is if there is any good in it. The second way, he replaces it with something better. Or Allah removes afflictions. Maybe sometimes you would have gotten an accident. Maybe you would have fallen into whatever, whatever. You understand? But then Allah removes it because you prayed to him about something that Allah didn't give you exactly what you wanted. But then he's answering your prayer through removing any affliction. You understand? Or 
he will give us whatever that we are praying about or to him about in this dunya, in the life hereafter. So keep praying for that Range Rover. Keep praying for that mansion. Keep praying. You will. Inshallah, if you don't, if you don't get it here. Don't be like, oh, me. Uh, me. Mongo, mongo. Mm -mm. He's not giving me anything. So Ashura, me, I gave up. Oh, you people, you keep praying. You know, some people are like that. Okay, you keep praying. But Kwamini, mm -mm. si, si, nashoka, nashoka kuomba mungu. Mungu astaki. You know? Wallahi, don't give up on praying. Allah is there. He listens. He's an all hearing. As Samuel. And he's the answer of prayers, Al, al, al Mojib. He answers our prayers. He does. No prayer goes unanswered, but he's answered in three ways. So last but not least, let's go in this uh, briefly. The importance of praying. Alhamdulillah, right? Time runs so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Those questions, please, if, you don't, if you've not asked any question, please send back those papers because I will have to give them out somewhere else. The importance of dua. This is a direct conversation with Allah. Direct conversation with Allah. We are speaking to Allah directly. Directly. In Islam, we don't have interceders. We don't have mediators. Isn't that just a blessing enough to be proud that we are Muslims and to be thankful to Allah for that grand gift? Meaning, you speak to Allah directly. Anytime. Anywhere. Yeah, Allah, I'm here. You know, talk to Allah as though you're seeing him. You know? Smile. If need be. Yeah, Allah, you're so great. Sometimes Allah has done for you some things and subhanAllah. You're just going to the prayer mat to thank him. Did you know that there are also pr uh, prayers for thanking Allah? Have we ever done that? Or we only go to prayer to ask and complain and ask and complain? Sometimes. Shukur. Just get wudu to sit on the prayer mat to smile with Allah. To thank him. You understand? Yeah, Allah, I'm here for nothing. Uh -uh, this time I'm not complaining. Of course I have some, eh? Because in life, we'll always have some things somewhere there disturbing us and here and there. But at least be thankful to Allah. Okay? Thank him. Smile. When you get to the prayer mat, smile. Eh? Because you are meeting with the most merciful. He loves us happy. Okay? Then when it needs crying, cry it all out. Let's stop going to human beings. They will gossip behind our back. Most of them, before you know, the ones we call our besties. Our bad news make them happy deep inside. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh my, no, 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 this, oh, no, no, no. You're crying. She shows you she's also sad, but inside she's celebrating. I'm glad she's also going through it. Most of the people, too bad to be true. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raj'oon. But Allah is the only one who will listen, understand you, help you through, and answer you. Okay? So the importance of dua, direct conversation with Allah, it's a form of worship. A dua wal ibadah. It's a form of worship. So we are obliged to pray to Allah. Another one is... Yes, this is a rest assured assurance. A rest assured assurance. Subhanallah. Takbir. When you pray to Allah, when you supplicate to Allah, be rest assured. You are going to be answered because you are praying to the answer of prayers. The one who loves to be prayed to. The one who loves to be asked. And he is going to answer you. He is going to without any fail have that confidence you know so every time you pray to Allah it releases all the, the baggage and all the baggage and all the pain it's all off your chest all off your shoulder well knowing I have handled my issues to the most high okay another one Yes, praying to Allah, we are forgiven our sins. We are forgiven our sins. Another one, of course, our ultimate goal is Jannah. 
Whenever you pray to Allah, entrusting your matters to Him, that means you are putting Him first, you are considering Him to be your everything, your own, your overall. And then that is, the ultimate goal is, is Jannah. Last but not least, yes, every time we pray to Allah, we are guided to the straight path. And that's what we are all straining for. Failure to do that, you're bound to go into shirk and take other paths that will mislead you to hellfire. Okay? So, my beloved sisters, yes, I am ready for your questions. Jazakallah khayal. I'm so humbled and so honored to be in front of you and addressing such humble, beautiful, beloved sisters like you are. May Allah put barak in everything that comes out of me or came out of me to be beneficious to us all and to enable us spread it out there because if you do so that is sadaqatul jariya no matter how little even if it's just one thing reminding someone about islam when they do what you reminded them they get their blessing you get your blessing and i get the blessing too because it came from me without any one of you plus the one who did it being subtracted from isn't allah the most merciful the most rewarding Indeed, Allah is the most merciful. Jazakallah khayl. So let's just get straight to our questions. Thank you so much.